This time around, it's the turn of Exchange Shared Mailboxes. What are they? How do they work? And as always, what can they do for you? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy here, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. So nice to see you. Hey, especially if this is your first time, I really do appreciate it. And, and if you this is not your first time, hey, well, welcome back. It's great to see you again. Um, this time around, I thought I would answer a number of questions that I've received on uh, Exchange Shared Mailboxes. Now, shared mailboxes can be created in one of uh, a number of ways. You can either create them directly as a shared mailbox, or you can convert a regular user's mailbox to become a shared mailbox. And if necessary, you can bring it back again. So I thought I would look at the number of different scenarios where you would use this. And there's also a couple of gotchas that I've discovered that I'm going to share with you as well. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And if you've got questions on this or any of my other sessions, then please get them down below. And don't forget to bump that like button. It really does make a difference to my channel. All right. So without any further ado, I think it's about time we got to some demos. Let's have a look. So I'm kicking off my demo here in Microsoft 365. I just want to kind of get a few things sorted out first with you. I'm going to go into Exchange. And um, before I do the Exchange bit, I just want to mention uh, collaboration. So of course, we're talking about shared mailboxes. And there are a number of reasons why you might want to have a shared mailbox. So a shared mailbox, you can create one here, either in Microsoft 365, or you can create them in Microsoft Exchange, of course. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new shared mailbox, and I'm going to create one for my Oslo sales managers. Okay. And again, I can put in a, an email address. You can change this, of course, if you want to. I also get the domain name. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share that mailbox. All right. So um, that's the first place that you can create one of these shared mailboxes. So Andy, what's the difference between a shared mailbox and a, let's say, for example, a Microsoft 365 group? Well, um, first of all, I'm going to add some members to my mailbox. So let's let's add some members in. So I'm going to bring in Adele, Alex. Let's say let's just bring in a few of these folks in. I'll bring in Grady. I'll bring in Irwin. OK, so I'm going to click on those and I'll bring them in. Give them a second. So as I say, one of the difference between a shared mailbox, a shared mailbox is kind of a single level of collaboration. So for example, um, if you have a bunch of staff like this, for example, who work in the same team, so their sales staff or production staff or, or something like that, um, then you can add them quite happily uh, to become members of the mailbox. So if I come back into the properties here, you can see that this is the Oslo sales managers. Uh, again, you can change this anytime. So you notice I, I gone and made a, a typo there, but I can just uh, update this if I want to. OK, so what else have we got? Well, this is this provides you with a shared exchange mailbox. Now, this differs from a Microsoft 365 group because you don't get the team and you all don't, don't get the shared SharePoint team site. You don't get all the other uh, features that you would typically get with a Microsoft 365 group. However, you do get a shared group and you can see that it does show me, for example, who the members are. You can also, and this is really important, you can manage your mailbox permissions here. 
Now, basically, we have a number of different sets of permissions. So basically, read and manage permissions is essentially kind of like full control. So if you've got full control on a mailbox, then pretty much you can do anything. The other main permissions are send as permissions and send on behalf of. So, for example, if you were in a sales, let's say you were a sales manager and you had an assistant, they could send mail on behalf of you. And it would say that in the email. It would send, it would say sent by Stephen on behalf of Peter. Whereas the send as permission, you're actually sending as that person. That's the difference between them. All right. So if I just go into read and manage permissions, you can see I can add those uh, permissions here for those individual users. So I, I can either add permissions and you can also remove permissions if I want to. So, for example, I can add permissions here and I can then add in other users if I want to. I can also remove permissions um, from a particular user there as well. Um, now, you can also see we've got some other options here showing the GAL. The GAL is what we call the global address list, and this is typically visible by everyone. And you can basically say whether you don't want it or you do want it to show. So, for example, if you were Bill Gates at Microsoft, you might not want your email address to be seen by everyone, would you? We also have the exchange settings. These will take me into my exchange settings. And just a couple of things here. This is, you can learn how to use mailboxes in Outlook. This will take you through to a docs.microsoft.com article, which is really interesting. I can also flip over into the exchange settings now. So this brings me into the shared mailbox settings in Microsoft Exchange. So again, the interesting thing about this, by the way, you'll notice it's, it's brought me into the classic exchange mailbox. All right. Now, just to say that um, when you create an exchange mailbox in 365 and in Azure, it stamps it with a unique identity. All right. Now, things that you can do, as I said, you can go in and you can see these are the users who have full access to that mailbox. So basically, if any of these users left, the mailbox would be intact and you could transfer the permissions to other users and so on. You also see the mailbox usage. Um, so how much of the mailbox have we used and when was the last time it was logged into? You can add some contact information, some details about the organization here, the email address. So you can see I can add in additional email addresses. And of course, you can have a look at the various mailbox features. So things like, um, and these are definitely things that you probably want to disable, by the way. These are uh, what we call legacy protocols. Now, the problems with legacy protocols is that they don't support multi-factor authentication. So uh, one of the things that we typically do is you would really want to switch those off just for um, security reasons. Now, the other couple of things that we can do, you can also do litigation hold. And what this does is it places the mailbox on legal hold. Uh, in other words, users can continue to use it. Uh, everything works just fine. The only difference is that the recycle bins never empty. Another option is you can also enable an archive mailbox for this. So an archive, of course, is if the mailbox gets too big, we can archive data. And as I've said in a previous um, version uh, or a, v a previous session, rather. So as I've said in a previous session, um, archiving is particularly useful um, as data is either deleted or archived in Microsoft 365. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just save those changes there. All right. Now, um, what I now want to do is I'm just going to just close this down. So let me just close that mailbox down. 
And the next thing, so that's basically, we've gone ahead, we've created a mailbox here. Now, as I mentioned, the difference between a mailbox and a group, uh, a Microsoft 365 group, you can extend it to become a team. It's much more collaborative. Um, I would tend to probably use a group because you get the OneDrive, you, know, you get the, not the OneDrive, you get the SharePoint document libraries, you get a team's website, and you get loads of extra stuff. But if you need a shared mailbox, then, you know, absolutely fine. It's there and you can use it. Now, if I just flip over here into Exchange Admin, um, I'm again, I'm going to come down into groups. Um, uh, you can see that in my groups here now, um, you've got Microsoft 365 groups, distribution lists, you've got dynamic distribution list and a mail enabled security group. So that's just a, a distribution list attached to a security group. All right. Now, um, as I mentioned, we have a number of different types of uh, recipients here. So you've got mailboxes, groups, contacts, of course, are external users. Um, but as I said, the shared mailbox experience is a particularly useful one. Now, Andy, you said there was two ways to create a mailbox. I did indeed. So um, another way that you can create a mailbox is by going into Microsoft 365. And you notice here, in fact, that there is a lot of crossover here. OK, so there's a lot of crossover and a lot of the Microsoft Exchange features are now available in um, 365. So, for example, if I, I've got a user here, let's say I've got a user called Isaiah, okay, and I'm going to go in here and uh, you can see that we have a mail tab. Um, first of all, if I just scroll down, you can see uh, I get all my usual Microsoft 365 uh, content here. I can click into the mail tab here. You can see you've got the permissions. So for example, if I want to grant the permissions to another user, I can do that. So I can say, okay, who do I want to have send as permissions uh, for, for Isaiah's mailbox and so on. Um, as I've mentioned, you can also see, you can control things like uh, mail forwarding and email forwarding, automatic replies. Um, but you can see, um, you can edit the exchange properties, um, you can manage litigation hold, but nowhere here do you see you get the shared mailbox option. All right. Now, if I click into the account here, um, so what Microsoft are doing is they're, they're kind of integrating their exchange menus right across um, the platform. So some features will be both available in 365 and some features will be available uh, in Exchange. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my exchange. I'm going to come down into recipients and I'm going to come into mailboxes. So I did say that there was two ways to do this. So I'm going to go into Isaiah's mailbox here and you can either go into the mailbox. But if you look up here on the toolbar, there's an option that's convert to shared mailbox. Now, if you go ahead and do this, um, you can, yep, yeah, I definitely want to do this. I want to convert this now to a shared mailbox. So now that this is a shared mailbox, of course, what you can now do is I can go into shared mailboxes. So I'll just close this down. So if I come back in here and let's say come into shared mailboxes and you can now see that Isaiah has now got a shared mailbox. I can come in, I can um, say, okay, what do I want to add some members into this mailbox? So I could say, yeah, I want to bring in Alex and Alan. So Alex and Alan, I want them to be members uh, of this shared mailbox. Now, very importantly, this is one of the most common questions that I get asked. What would happen if you deleted Isaiah's account? It's okay. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and delete Isaiah's account and see what happens. So I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm going to go into here 
and I'm going to say, right, I want to delete this user. So now what we have is we have a couple of options. Um, so it's just telling me that it's going to remove the license. Um, I don't have any email licenses. Um, uh, I can, uh, I've got no delegate permissions, of course, because it's now a shared mailbox. Um, I can give another user access to Alex's OneDrive. So um, what this means is, let's say, for example, I've got a user called Adele. And Adele is Alex's manager, or Isaiah's manager. So she will have access to Isaiah's OneDrive for 30 days. I can also give another user access to uh, Isaiah's email if I want to. So I can grant that to somebody else. All right. Um, again, I could grant that to a different user. OK, so again, I could say I want to give Adele access. All right. And I'll just say next. And do you want to use the current display name um, or do you want to create a new display name uh, for this mailbox? So essentially what this is doing is it's detaching it. And you can see I can send automatically replies and I can specify um, do you want to do the auto replies or not? So again, uh, now I'm going to delete any email aliases and you can transfer ownership. OK, so I can transfer the ownership of a mailbox by using this particular tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to do that. All right. So I'm not going to give another user access, but that's one way that you could solve this problem, delete Isaiah's account, and then Adele would have had access to that account. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to delete the user. So let's see what happens. OK, now, um, yeah, that user has been successfully deleted. So you can see the user is gone and the user is now in the deleted items folder. So what happens to that mailbox? Well, I'm going to go back into shared mailboxes and look, it's still here. Now, um, there is a slight gotcha with this. Um, if you go into this mailbox, um, one of the things that you can do, again, you can change those permissions here. Um, the only thing is, um, if you wanted to convert this back, You'll notice here that you can't convert the user back um, to become a permanent mailbox again. All right. So um, you can you can see here it's only saying delete um, shared mailbox. You can't convert it back to become a mailbox. Now, you'll notice here that I can't convert that to become a regular mailbox. And the reason is is because Isaiah's account um, is linked, directly linked here. And it's a unique ID that stamps on the user account. So what you would need to do is you would need to select this user. You would need to restore this user back. And the final thing that you would do is just pop into the user account here. Uh, just wait for this for a second and licenses and apps. And of course, just make sure that the user is licensed and they've got their license back. That's really important. Now, if you go into the mail options here, you'll notice that there is no convert mailbox uh, back. So now that this is still a shared mailbox. So what we need to do is pop into Exchange Online, come into the admin center here, select Isaiah's account and we can either go into his account um, or probably up here. If you just click on the little ellipse here, click on the, the ellipse and it, you can see it now says convert it back to become a regular mailbox. All right. So in that demo, what I've done is I've showed you how you can create a mailbox and also how you can convert a user mailbox. But it's really important to know that the ID anchor of a converted mailbox still exists with the user. Now, you can either convert the user to be a shared mailbox, and but if you delete the user, 
um, you would need to restore that user back again. Or alternatively, as you saw, you could rename and reassign that user. So you go through that whole wizard and that's essentially how you manage shared mailboxes in Exchange Online and Microsoft 365. So there you have it, shared mailboxes in Microsoft 365. Isn't that cool? Now listen, if you want more details on that, check out there is an article on docs.microsoft.com that kind of explains all the gotchas for you. In fact, I'll tell you what I might do, I might actually include it in the link uh, for this video. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, if you've enjoyed the video, bump the like button. It really does make a difference. And of course, if you've not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time around. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.